Hello everyone, I am Hao Nguyen, a urologist at the University of California, San Francisco, and thank you for the opportunity to discuss a high food for globulation. And I have no disclosure. My task today will be to focus on the basic principle of focal therapy with high food, the historical development, the role in the modern management of prostate cancer, the current guidelines, and outcome. HIFU is a non-invasive approach that uses precisely delivered ultrasound energy to achieve tumor necrosis while minimizing side effects. Now, the success of this modality rely heavily on careful selection of patients and lifelong surveillance. In some men, tissue preservation modality is an important and appealing alternative to whole prostate radical approaches such as radiotherapy or radical prostatectomy. Focal therapy offer a middle ground between these two extremes. There are two different physical um, mechanisms that occur during the application of high intensity focus ultrasound. The first one is the thermal effects. Focus ultrasound waves are capable of inducing a sharp increase in temperature from 85 degrees Celsius to 95 degrees in a few seconds, causing tissue coagulations and leads to irreversible tissue damages through necrosis. The second part is the uh, uh, of the mechanism is the effect of the negative pressure of the ultrasound wave on the targeted tissue causing cavitation bubble inside the target, uh, target cells. The sudden collapse of this bubble can generate up to 30,000 bars of pressure le leading to tissue necrosis. You can see here on the left panel uh, of the prostate tissue uh, what it looked like after 48 hours. And then the tissue is replaced by fibrous uh, after three months. The first prostate cancer treatment with high flu occurred in 1993 uh, at Leon University. Uh, in 2015, the first device was cleared by the FDA, the Appleton by EDAP technology, and the Sonoblade by Sonicare. This was cleared to apply prostate tissue. In 2018, the Focal One it was the latest generation of robotic high flu platform uh, with MRI. Uh, fusion that was cleared by the FDA and 2021 we have a CPT code that the physician and hospital can use worldwide uh, there's about 70,000 patients uh, with prostate cancer has been treated with uh, focal ablation even though HIFU is approved by the FDA for destruction of prostate tissue it is not approved explicitly for the treatment of prostate cancer. HIFU is not included in the NCCN, AUA, ASTRO, SEO, and EUA for the initial management of prostate cancer. Now, the NCCN guideline does offer HIFU or cryo as an option for radio recurrent prostate cancer. Most recently, the German guidelines now include focal therapy as an option for low-risk prostate cancer patients. Focal therapy fills an important treatment gap in prostate cancer, especially for men who has low to intermediate-risk prostate cancer, and potentially in the relapse setting or metastatic setting as a way to control the tumor with minimal side effects. Advances in imaging, targeted biopsy, and genomic testing have changed the ability to localize disease better and re-stratify prostate cancer more precisely. Now, this resulted in many men with early diagnosis of small volume unilateral clinically significant cancer. And these patients are seeking an option between active surveillance and radical therapies. And HIFU may provide oncologic control with minimal side effects and preserve the organ 
and this may be appealing to men with low or intermediate risk disease or in men with metastatic disease who seek to control the tumor locally without uh, much of a side effect. As most men with low risk disease have favorable outcome with active surveillance, active surveillance is still the preferred treatment modality for men uh, with low risk cancer. This is our seven years outcome data at UCSF on 2200 patients with low to intermediate risk cancer who had opted for active surveillance. As you can see here, 41% at seven years had an upgrade uh, with the medium follow-up of 25 months. However, many changes in the gray or the volume are low or marginal. And you can see here, the most importantly, the treatment-free survival at seven years is up to 59%. You can see here the treatment-free survival after active surveillance stratified by Leeson score at diagnosis. Now the overall survival is 96%, prostate cancer specific survival is 99%, metastasis-free survival is 99%. So does focal therapy or HIFU have a role in the active surveillance uh, group? Now, treatment in lieu of active surveillance to decrease mobility and cost uh, in selected patients with low risk disease but higher risk features such as germ line mutation, high grade or adverse pathology such as cryptiform pattern, adverse genomic or MRI or PSA density, or at the time of progression. So these are the cases that focal therapy may have a role in this group. Now focal therapies are based on the concept that the dominant lesion is the driver of progression and metastases. Now this is an area of intense research at UCSF both in the basic science and the clinical setting. Here uh, we recently uh, published a paper in uh, European Urology Oncology evaluating uh, the dominant tumor progression across serial biopsy uh, on men uh, undergoing after surveillance and to determine if there could be a reasonable candidate for focal therapy. So this is looking at uh, one, about a thousand men on active surveillance for low and intermediate risk disease. The median number of biopsies is about three at confirmatory biopsy, 43% remain a candidate for focal therapy. Now among the candidates for focal therapy on both the initial and the confirmatory biopsy, 70% remain favorable for a hemigland ablation at the subsequent biopsy. The, uh, most importantly, the serial biopsy finding shows that the tumor location remain relatively stable and significant changes in gray or volume occur largely in the dominant tumor. Most importantly, combining diagnostic and confirmatory biopsy finding helps better select the patient for focal therapy than the use of the diagnostic biopsy alone. At UCSF, we use the focal one uh, to uh, deliver high food for two patients. Uh, we start out with general anesthesia. The probe is inserted and we construct a 3D mapping of the prostate. We then import the MRI lesion or targeted biopsy with the ultrasound and allow for the MRI ultrasound to fuse. Then we plan for the conformation or treatment. Uh, this is fairly a straightforward procedure. The main thing is to select the patient carefully and uh, we have to be upfront about the patient in terms of the lifelong surveillance and the recurrent risk. When I discuss the outcome after focal ablation, I always go over with the patients the four ways that we can 
uh, fell uh, after focal ablation with high flu. One is the heat sink effect where cancer vessel can wash heat away from the lesion. Two is the margin effects. Uh, we always wanted to ablate uh, the tumor uh, with a 15 millimeter margin. However, we can still miss these satellite cancer uh, beyond that dominant tumor. The third one is the staging effects. Uh, this is where we can miss synchronous clinically significant cancer or we can miss a synchronous micrometastasis outside of the prostate. And fourth is the field effect. This is result of progression of a low risk or a peak precancerous cancer area uh, where progress into a clinically significant tumor. This is a review of over 4,100 patients with mostly favorable intermediate risk undergoing focal therapy in the last three years. Of the 42% with a biopsy in follow-up, 20% uh, will experience a recurrent uh, on that biopsy. And infill recurrent rate is about 18%. Our field recurrent rate is about 6%. Now, with the improvement of MRI and guided biopsy, urologists started to adopt high flu or focal therapy as a modality to offer patients uh, who desire uh, organ sparing uh, approach. The, uh, here is the table showing some of the recent study. Uh, the main thing to focus here is the uh, side effects. So urinary continent and potency preservation is very high in all of this study. I like to focus on one study from Europe published in 2018 in European Urology. This is a prospective multi-center study of a five years outcome following focal therapy. Uh, 625 patients were treated with focal high food 85% of the patient had intermediate or high-risk prostate cancer. At five years, the failure-free survival was 88%, metastasis-free survival was 98%, and cancer-specific survival was 100%. Only 2% had urinary incontinent requiring use of one pad daily. Bowel complication was rare at 0.3%. Recently, data from USC and University of Miami shows great functional outcome and good early oncologic result. Minimal or no changes in continent or sexual function after high flu. Failure-free survival was 91% at two years. As you can see, I presented early evidence demonstrating encouraging short, medium term outcome. However, there's no randomized control trial comparing focal therapy to radical therapy. Now the good news is that the Kronos trial from Europe will compare cancer control in these two strategies. The Kronos A arm will be randomizing a patient to either radical treatment with radiation, surgery versus uh, cryotherapy and high intensity focused ultrasound. The Kronos B arm will be comparing focal therapy uh, with a uh, patient with focal therapy and finasteride and focal therapy with biclutamide. And finally, there's also a phase two randomized control trial comparing radiotherapy, radical prostatectomy, and focal therapy in men with newly diagnosed metastatic prostate cancer. This trial will bring important data to patients and clinicians in the future. To summarize, focal therapy with high food fuel an existing gap between active surveillance and radical whole gland therapy. It is associated with minimal side effects. We have promising oncological data. It uses remain highly variable and the guidelines are progressing. I've also shown data from UCSF 
indicating that focal therapy may have a role at time of diagnosis in selected patients on active surveillance and at the time of progression in many patients on active surveillance. Ultimately, the success of focal therapy depends on patient selection. High quality MRI and targeted biopsy is required and perhaps the use of genomics of PSMA PET to select patients.